Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore is a unit of the National Park System designated as a U.S. National Lakeshore located in northwest Indiana and managed by the National Park Service. It was authorized by Congress in 1966. The National Lakeshore runs for nearly 25 miles 40 kilometers along the southern shore of Lake Michigan, in Chesterton, Indiana. The park contains approximately 15,000 acres 6, hectares. The National Lakeshore has acquired about 95% of the property within the authorized boundaries. Its holdings are non-contiguous and include the 2,182-acre Indiana Dunes State Park 1925, which is owned and managed by the state of Indiana. The park is physically divided into 15 disconnected pieces. Along the lakefront, the eastern area is roughly the lakeshore south to US-12 or US-20 between Michigan City, Indiana on the east and the ArcelorMittal steel plant on the west. A small extension, south of the steel mill continues west along Salt Creek to Indiana 249. The western area is roughly the shoreline south to US-12 between the Burns Ditch west to Broadway, downtown Gary, Indiana. In addition, there are several outlying areas, including, Pinhook Bog, in LaPorte County to the east. The Heron Rookery in Porter County, the center of the park, and the Calumet Prairie State Nature Preserve and Hobart Prairie Grove, both in Lake County, the western end of the park. Also within the National Lakeshore is the Hoosier Prairie State Nature Preserve, managed by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. History There is little evidence of permanent native Indian communities forming during the earlier years, rather, the evidence suggests that seasonal hunting camps were the norm. The earliest evidence for permanent camps was the occupation of the Ohio Valley by the Hopewell culture. Five groups of mounds have been documented in the Dunes area. These mounds would be consistent with the period of 200 BCE Goodall Focus to 800 CE early Mississippian, though even that was a short-lived permanency. Beginning in the 1500s, European exploration and trade introduced more changes to the human environment. Tribal animosities and traditional European competition affected tribal relations. Entire populations began moving westward, while others sought to dominate large geographic trading areas. Once again, the dunes became a middle point on a journey from the east or the west. It continued to remain a key hunting ground for villages over a wide area. It wasn't until the 19th century that native villages once again were scattered through the area, but this was soon followed by European settlement. Joseph Bailly was the earliest recorded settler in the dunes. He moved here from trading villages around Niles, Michigan, settling along the Calumet River. Soon he was joined by a series of other settlers and the communities in the dunes began to develop. They included Chesterton, Porter, Tremont, and the town of the Pines. These pioneer communities grew and expanded. City West was one of several ghost towns situated in the dunes. Planned as a rival to Chicago, it was partly built in 1837 but failed that summer, during a national economic panic. The remains of the town, partly carted off to be used as lumber, were located near where the pavilion in the state park now stands, until a forest fire in the 1850s destroyed whatever was left. Today, most of the coastline has been settled for use as homes, factories, and businesses, with some areas reserved for public parks. Preserving the dunes A movement began in 1899 to preserve the unique area of the dunes. In 1916, the visionary National Parks director Stephen Mather held hearings in Chicago on a Sand Dunes National Park. In 1926, the Indiana Dunes State Park opened. In the 1950s, a desire to maximize economic development through a Port of Indiana spurred interest in preservation. The Save the Dunes Council, including its president Dorothy Richardson Buell and activist Hazel Hannell, began a nationwide campaign to buy the land. Their first success was the purchase of 56 acres 230,000 square meters in Porter County, the Cowles Tamarack Bog. The Kennedy Compromise entailed the creation of a national lakeshore and a port. Then Illinois Senator Paul H. Douglas led the congressional effort to save the dunes. In late 1966, the bill passed and the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore became a reality. 
Four subsequent expansion bills for the park 1976, 1980, 1986, and 1992 have increased the size of the park to more than 15,000 acres 61 square kilometers. In 2017, a campaign with local bipartisan support was launched to re-designate Indiana Dunes as a national park. The House of Representatives approved H.R. 1488, the Indiana Dunes National Park Act on November 1, 2017. However, in a August 15, 2018 Senate subcommittee hearing, the acting director of the National Park Service indicated that the agency does not support the redesignation. Geography <laughs> 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 The creeks and rivers of the National Lakeshore include Dunes Creek is a northwards flowing 4.3 mile long kilometers stream which drains the flows northward receiving first the Great Marsh Tributary from the east then the West Branch Tributary which drains Cowles Bog. Dunes Creek passes through the coastal sand dunes to empty into Lake Michigan. East Arm Little Calumet River, also known as the East Branch Little Calumet River is a 22.1 mile long .6 kilometers portion of the Little Calumet River that begins just east of Holmesville, Indiana in New Durham Township in LaPorte County and flows west to Porter County where it is diverted to the port of Indiana Burns Waterway and Lake Michigan. Salt Creek is a 24.0 mile long .6 kilometers tributary of the East Arm Little Calumet River that begins south of Valparaiso in Porter County, Indiana and flows north until it joins the East Arm Little Calumet River just before it exits to Lake Michigan via the port of Indiana Burns Waterway. Trail Creek is a 7.3 mile long .7 kilometers north by northwest flowing stream whose main stem begins at the confluence of the West Branch Trail Creek and the East Branch Trail Creek in LaPorte County, Indiana, United States and flows through the Michigan City Harbor into Lake Michigan. <laughs> Geology The Lake Michigan Basin was formed during the Wisconsin Glacial Period. The Michigan lobe of the Continental Glacier began its retreat northward over 20,000 years before present YBP, forming the southern shore of the Lake Michigan Basin. The Valparaiso Moraine is the dominant geologic form that created the various landscape forms of the Indiana Dunes, about 40,000 YBP. Within the arc created by the Valparaiso Moraine are two younger recessional moraines of the Tinley Moraine and the Lake Border Moraine. Each moraine created an artificial dam across the southern outflow of the melt waters of the receding glaciers. As each glacial lake breached a low spot in the moraines, water levels receded, leaving a series of shorelines and dune ridges. The Calumet shoreline is the oldest visible shoreline of Lake Michigan. It is a visible sand ridge along Ridge Road through Lake and Porter Counties, Indiana. Two older shorelines, the Tolston and the Glenwood shoreline, are much harder to identify and further south in the counties. During the periods of glacial retreat, there were periods of stability. During these times, glacial lakes formed along the southern borders of the glaciers, bound into the Lake Michigan basin by the recessional moraines. Four major glacial lake periods created the Indiana Dunes. They are the Glacial Lake Chicago 14,000 YBP, Glacial Lake Algonquin 9,000 YBP, Glacial Lake Chippewa 7,000 YBP, and Lake Nipissing Stage 4,000 YBP. Once the glaciers had fully retreated from the Lake Michigan Basin, post-Lake Nipissing Stage, the same factors that created the dunes south of the current shoreline, expanded the existing shoreline. The littoral currents or longshore drift transport sands southward along the eastern shore of Lake Michigan. As they encounter streams bringing water from inland, sandbars are created, pointing down current, either southward if the shore is north to south or westward along the southern shore itself. If the currents are strong enough as they were when the Glenwood shoreline was created, shallow inland bays would be formed with a wide sand spit between it and the open lake. Over time, the sand spits would merge with the far shoreline forming interdunnel ponds. Each sand spit would become a dune ridge. As the ponds filled in and wind built the outer sand ridges higher, the ponds would dry up and only a stream would remain, as the Little Calumet River does today, just south the state and national parks. As the shoreline moved northward, new ridges formed, additional streams, now slower and less powerful formed and the process duplicated itself. To the west of the Indiana Dunes, Wolf Lake in Hammond, Indiana forms a western border to the dunes. 
Here the same process is at work, only the littoral drift is again south, but along the western shore, pushing the sand and sand spits eastward. Today, it is the remnants of the marsh lands and interdunnel or inter-sand spit lakes that have formed this region over 40,000 years. <laughs> Flora and fauna The park is in the Central Forest Grasslands Transition Ecoregion. Topic rare, threatened, and endangered species The park includes habitats for several rare plants and animals. The park has more than 1,400 species of vascular plants, ranking it eighth in total plant species among all units of the national park system. None of the plants are on the federal list of threatened and endangered species, T and e species but several are on the list of state T and E species. Populations of each plant group are estimated to be around 100 to 120 individual plants. The species included are white baneberry, Actea pachypoda, Virginia snake root, Aristolochia serpentaria, shooting star, Dodecatheon media, American columbo, Fraser caroliniensis, pink corydalis, Corydalis sempervirens. Among the rare and endangered wildlife are Indiana bat, Myotis sedalis, Eastern massasauga rattlesnake, Cistrurus catenatus catenatus. In addition, the park has habitat suitable for the bald eagle, Haliaetus leucocephalus. Topic. Species count Topic. Wildlife Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore is host to wide variety of wildlife, including white-tailed deer, red fox, raccoons, opossums, cottontail rabbits, various rodents, Canada geese, gulls, squirrels, hawks, turkey vultures, mallards, great blue herons, songbirds, and garter snakes, songbirds. <laughs> Flowering plants The Indiana Dunes has over 369 species of flowering plants. Of these, 13 are considered threatened or in danger of extinction. Additionally, there are four invasive flowering plants on the list. Some of the most common spring flowers include the May apple, buttercups six varieties, and violets 14 varieties. Summer brings out the orchids five varieties, and lots of goldenrod 11 varieties. Topic. Invasive plants Invasive plants are those introduced species that dominate a landscape pushing out traditionally native species and other species by their ability to multiply rapidly. There are 54 such species in the dunes. Topic. Unusual sightings In October 1920, a rare Arctic three-toed woodpecker was captured a mile west of Dune Park Station, later that month another male was captured east of Dune Park Station. One was busy digging out grubs and the other was nervously flying from tree to tree. In May 1919, a clay-colored sparrow was found near Dune Park. It was a part of a larger flock of Harris sparrow migrating along the western shore of Lake Michigan. Topic. Extirpated species Several species of plants and animals have disappeared from the dunes. Few can be clearly identified. Among those species thought to be gone are listed below. Topic. Exotic and invasive species Alien or exotic species are plants and animals which are not native to the area. These plants can be classified as invasive if they rapidly replace other plants and animals in the ecosystem, creating a monoculture and threatening the extinction of the traditional plants and animals. Among plants found in the park, the following are considered to be exotic. Those marked with an asterisk are listed as invasive. Topic: <inaudible> Bioblitz <inaudible> On May 15 and 16, 2009, the park hosted an all-taxa biological diversity survey. In a 24-hour period, as part of the Bioblitex 2000 students and thousands of additional volunteers surveyed the park for every available living species. 
John Francis, Vice President of Research, Conservation and Exploration for the National Geographic Society, stated that 890 species had been inventoried. The tally at the close of the 24 hours was 890 species, including 26 amphibians and reptiles, 101 birds, 18 fish, 27 fungi, 11 mammals, 410 plants, and 178 insects. The tally had risen to 1,200 unique species by June 1. Topic: <laughs> Natural areas. Calumet Prairie Calumet Prairie is a joint venture between the National Park Service and the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. The Calumet Prairie State Nature Preserve in the northern portion of the land between Interstate 90 to the north and the Little Calumet River on the south. The National Lakeshore owns the southern half of this plot. Cowles Bog Cowles Bog, a national natural landmark, is a fen wetland named in honor of biologist and ecologist Henry Chandler Cowles. Located south and west of Dune Acres, Indiana, Cowles Bog is the sole remaining remnant of the Central Dunes, where Cowles performed his pioneering field studies of ecological succession and species diversity. The bog is drained by Dunes Creek, which flows to Lake Michigan at the Indiana Dunes State Park Swimming Beach. A National Lakeshore Trail runs from Mineral Springs Road into Cowles Bog. <laughs> <laughs> Great Marsh The Great Marsh is an interdunnel wetland just south of the Dune Ridge overlooking Lake Michigan. It stretches from steel plants in Burns Harbor, 12 miles 19 kilometers east to County Line Road on the edge of Michigan City. A century ago, it was the nesting and migratory layover for many birds, which depended on its variety of plants. In the late 19th century, the marsh was drained through a series of ditches, creating three watersheds and reducing the water table. As the water levels changed, new plants and trees moved in, creating a new habitat and displacing the wildlife that was dependent on the pre-existing wetlands. Restoration Beginning in 1998, the National Lakeshore began restoration of the marsh by closing Derby Ditch and restoring 500 acres 200 hectares. The work consists of Plugging culverts Filling ditches Creating levees with spillways Planting native plants, either as seed or small sprouts. Removing non-native plants and trees. Topic: <laughs> Heron Rookery. The Heron Rookery is located along the East Arm Little Calumet River in the northeast corner of Porter County. The rookery is physically separated from the main part of the park. It is accessible from County Road 600 East, south of County Road 1400 North. The rookery is a hardwood forest. The great blue heron nests for which the site is named are no longer a feature of the area. Spring brings out a variety of wildflowers. <laughs> Hoosier Prairie Hoosier Prairie, a national natural landmark, is a 430 acres 170 hectares tallgrass prairie adjacent to Griffith, Indiana. It is a geographically isolated unit of the lakeshore, owned and maintained by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources as a state nature preserve. Some 574 species of plants have been observed growing in this patch of prairie. Miller Woods. Miller Woods is located in Miller Beach, Indiana. It is accessed through the Paul H. Douglas Center for Environmental Education on Lake Street. The area is dominated by dune and swale topography. The ridges or swells are beach and dune sand. They date from the post glacial Lake Nipissing period some 3,000 years before present. The swales are the depressions between the ridges. They are generally either ponds or marshes. M. Noak Prairie M. Noak Prairie is an active prairie restoration along Beam Street in the central portion of the park.
Topic: <laughs> Mount Baldy. Mount Baldy is a sand dune located at the east end of the park. At 123 feet 37 meters tall, it is one of the tallest sand dunes on the southern shore of Lake Michigan. It is a wandering dune that moves an average of 4 feet meters every year, and so is called a living dune. Mount Baldy is accessible from U.S. Route 12 also known as Dunes Highway between the town of Pines and the western border of Michigan City. Visitors once were allowed to hike 0.7 miles .1 kilometers up the dune. As of July, 2018, much of the dune itself, including the summit, were closed to allow beach grasses and other native plants to regenerate, and prevent injuries to visitors. An alternative trail leading to the beach takes visitors directly past the dune, creating just slightly lower than the summit itself. On a clear day, there are views of Lake Michigan, Chicago's skyline and South Shore, from this point. Pinhook Bog Pinhook Bog, a national natural landmark, is a geographically isolated unit of the National Lakeshore. The Quaking Peat Bog is located near U.S. Route 421 approximately 9 miles 14 kilometers south of Michigan City. The bog formed from a postglacial kettle moraine left behind about 14,000 years before the present by the melting of the ice sheet during the end of the last glacial period. The acidic bog is noted for pitcher plants and other wetland species. Access to the bog is restricted to ranger-led guided tours. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Historic areas. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Bai Shelberg Farms. The Bayi Shelberg Farmstead is located close to the geographic center of the National Lakeshore, at U.S. Route 20 and Mineral Springs Road. Bayi Homestead This is the location of the Pioneer Trading Post established in 1822 by fur trade pioneer Joseph Bai. Bai settled here and his last home, adapted from his 1830s retirement house, survives. The homestead was designated a U.S. National Historic Landmark in 1962. <laughs> Chelberg Farm The real estate became the home of the Shelberg family, who built a farm on its sandy soil. As of 2008, the lakeshore maintains a heritage farm on the Shelberg land, with the Bai family cemetery on the northern edge of the property. <laughs> Bai Cemetery The Bai Cemetery is located half a mile north of the homestead. Its location is a sandy bluff, which once looked out across the dunes to Lake Michigan. Today, the forest covers the dunes and the lake is not visible. Numerous changes have occurred since the first burial in 1827. Joseph Bailly buried his only son by Marie in the fall of 1827 on a sandy knoll. He erected an oak cross on the site and a three-sided shelter. After 1866, the Bailly area was no longer the quiet place that it had been. Other families now lived in the area and some had been using the cemetery for their families as well. However, late in 1866, Rose Howe granddaughter of Joseph Bailly had the family plots fenced and requested that those other families remove their deceased to other cemeteries. In 1879, she had the entire cemetery walled in and an iron gate installed to the north. Finally in 1914, Rose Howe took one further step to protect the cemetery of her family. She had the area inside the wall filled with sand. Stone steps replaced the gate to a contemplative walk atop the cemetery. An oaken cross was raised atop this new ground, continuing the tradition started by her grandfather. Rose Howe died in 1916, while in California. She was returned to Indiana in 1917 and was the last burial in the family cemetery. Century of Progress Architectural District The Century of Progress Architectural District is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is located in the east portion of the park. 
The district consists of a total of five buildings, all from the Homes of Tomorrow exhibition during the 1933 Century of Progress World's Fair which took place in Chicago. <laughs> Good Fellow Club Youth Camp Created by the Good Fellow Club of U.S. Steel in 1941, the camp served the children of Gary, Indiana until 1977. It provided outdoor recreation and a chance to leave the city behind for a week or more. The camp used tent cabins with a central restroom and shower house. Atop a rise was the main lodge where meals were provided and a trading post with a bowling alley were maintained. Lustron Homes The National Lakeshore acquired three Lustron houses during its land acquisition process. The Jacob Kleon House was located in an endangered habitat. It was moved to the east side of Drake Avenue in Beverly Shores and placed atop a dunes overlooking the lake. The Shuloff House located on Lakefront Drive was transferred to the Historic Landmarks Foundation of Indiana for preservation and it was moved to Stevens Street in Porter, Indiana. The Powell House remains inaccessible within the park on Lakefront Drive. Topic: Swedish Farmsteads Historic District pending. The Swedish Farmsteads of Porter County, Indiana are representative of the numerous rural communities settled by a significant ethnic population. They influenced the religious community and social community. Swedish immigration was at its highest from 1840 until 1920. At its height, 1910, it was estimated that one out of every five Swedes was living in the United States. Recreation The park contains 15 miles 24 kilometers of beaches, as well as sand dunes, bogs, marshes, swamps, fens, prairies, rivers, oak savannas, and woodland forests. The park is also noted for its singing sands. More than 350 species of birds have been observed in the park. It has one of the most diverse plant communities of any unit in the U.S. National Park System with 1418 vascular plant species including 90 threatened or endangered ones. The Indiana Dunes area is unique in that it contains both arctic and boreal plants such as the bearberry alongside desert plants such as the prickly pear cactus. First-time visitors to the lakeshore often go to the Dorothy Buell Memorial Visitor Center at US Route 20 and Indiana Route 49 near Porter, Indiana. This center offers standard visitor center amenities including a video, brochures, hands-on exhibits, and a gift shop. It is free to the general public. Camping is available at the Dunewood Campground on U.S. Route 12. The campground includes an RV dump station and two loops of trailer accessible sites, some with pull-through drives. All sites have grills, a picnic table, and access to restrooms with running water and showers. There are a limited number of walk-in sites in the Douglas Loop. The park provides opportunities for bird watching, camping, 45 miles 72 kilometers of hiking, fishing, swimming, horseback riding, and cross-country skiing. Cycling is available on the Calumet Trail, a crushed limestone multi-use trail which runs through the eastern section of the park, providing access to the Indiana Dunes State Park, as well as to the communities of Beverly Shores, the town of Pines, and Mount Baldy on the edge of Michigan City, Indiana. A new Great Marsh Trail opened in 2010 with an accessible, paved section usable by wheelchairs opening in fall 2012. The trail is off Broadway in the east end of the park. The park has about 2 million visits a year. Rules state not to feed any of the wildlife, including seagulls, deer, or raccoons. Collecting crinoid fossils on the beach is strictly prohibited. Possession or use of a metal detector is also prohibited, as in all national parks. Rangers provide free walks and talks throughout the park on a regular basis. The Singing Sands, the official newspaper of the National Lakeshore is published semi-annually with a listing of ranger lead activities. Events in 2013, showed that on large dunes unexpected sinkholes may develop. Scientists concluded these are caused by buried trees that eventually decay causing cavities. Trails. 
The Indiana Dunes has numerous short hike trails and a few longer distance trails. Miller Woods Trail is located off Lake Street in Gary's Miller Beach community. The trail is fully accessible from a parking lot just north of the Douglas Center for Environmental Education. Tolston Dune Overlook is a short accessible walk through the treetops to a dune ridge overlook of the vast inland marsh. For a more in-depth experiences, the Tolston Dune Trail consists of two loops forming a 3 miles walk around the through the marsh and oak savannas. Both trails start along US-12, just east of the Porter Lake County Line Road and the West Beach unit of the National Lakeshore. Succession Trail is located at West Beach. The trail climbs into the high dunes, and while mostly on boardwalk and stairways, the climb is steep. This trail is about 1 mile kilometers long. Bai Shelberg Trails is a series of interconnected trails. Primarily, it consists of two loops through the historic area around the Bai Homestead and the Shelberg Farm. This 2.5 mile kilometers trail takes visitors to a second growth forest, where the trees had once been removed for farming or timber harvest. Included along the North Spur is a trip to the Bai Cemetery. The Little Calumet River Trail offers an opportunity to visit a restored prairie and the flood plain of the East Arm Little Calumet River. Both represent the land before settlers arrived. This 2.2 miles kilometers trail can be reached from the Bai Chelberg Trails by walking west from the homestead to Howe Road, then following it across the East Arm Little Calumet River and up through the wetland overlook and parking lot for M. Noak Prairie. This trail ends near the north end of the two loops of the Bai Shelberg Trails, or visitors could walk from the parking area at Howe Road. Cowles Bog Trail is reached off of North Mineral Springs Road. Parking is to the east of the guard shack for Dune Acres. This 5 miles kilometers loop is one of the most rugged trails in the park. Visitors begin with a long level walk skirting the wetlands of the Cowles Bog Complex and the Dune Ridges to the north. Following the first fork to the north, they must climb through the dunes until they reach Lake Michigan. This is one of the least crowded areas of the park. Upon return, visitors can take the west part of the loop. Again through the dunes, covered with northern white cedars, black oaks and a variety of trees, visitors will again see interdunnel wetlands, the open beach, and the long, flat Cowles Bog Wetland Complex. To complete the full 5 miles kilometers, visitors need to continue west around the wetlands to the parking area at Mineral Spur Road Crossing, with parking available at Mineral Springs Road, Dune Park Station, Calumet Dunes Trail Park, and at US-12, where it crosses the South Shore Tracks, just west of Michigan City. The Calumet Dune Trail is fully accessible from the Calumet Dunes Interpretive Center Kemmel Road at US-12. The trail is 0.8 miles kilometers long and fully paved. Here, visitors may observe a mature wetland forest. The far western end of the Calumet Dune Trail links to the Glenwood Dune Horse and Hiking Trail. The horse trail is 6.4 miles kilometers long and is accessible by horses and hikers from its own parking lot at US 20 just west of Kemmel Road. Visitors must bring their own horses. Topic. Burnham Plan Trails The Marquette Plan, a «lakeshore investment strategy» for Indiana, is composed of two key elements. A 50-mile trail is planned to cross Indiana to link Illinois, Indiana and Michigan communities along the Lake Michigan shore. There are planned both land trails for bicycles and hikers and a «blue water» trail for kayakers. Topic. Water Trail The Lake Michigan Water Trail, was designated a National Recreation Trail in 2011 and currently extends 45-mile from Chicago's Northerly Island to Michigan City's Millennium Plaza. Long-distance hike, bike trail There will be links to major parks and a wide variety of cultural and natural sites. The 9 miles 14 kilometers Marquette Trail will eventually connect the eastern and western segments of Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. The 3 miles 4 .8 kilometers Porter Brickyard Trail opened in 2012 as part of the Burnham Plan Centennial. 
It will link several community hike bike trails to the Calumet hike bike trail, creating a link between the Lake County communities and Michigan City. Northwestern Indiana Regional Planning Commission (NIRPC) is guiding the work with assistance from local governments, the National Park Service, private landowners, and the American Planning Association. Topic: <laughs> Lake Michigan. West Beach, located adjacent to U.S. Route 12 and County Line Road lies on the border of Gary and Portage, Indiana. It is a geographically separated section of the lakeshore that is preserved as a piece of public beach access and an example of the same theme of plant succession as is found in Cowles Bog. This section of the lakeshore displays most of the successive stages of Indiana Dunes biotic progression, from open beach sands to mature eastern black oak forest. A new 2007 West Beach Succession Trail, 0.7 miles or 1.1 kilometers in length, features different stages of plant succession in the beach and inland dunes. The Portage Lakefront and Riverwalk was completed in 2009 as a project of the National Park Service, Northwest Indiana Regional Development Authority, and the City of Portage, Indiana. The National Park Service owns the site and all facilities. The site is operated by the City of Portage through a cooperative agreement. Porter Beach, located north of U.S. Route 12, is a small, public sand beach within the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. The surrounding area is residential and is governed by the town of Porter. Kemmel Beach Lake View Central Avenue Beach Mount Baldy Education Topic Public Programs Maple Sugar Time, for two weeks every spring, an opportunity to make maple sugar is offered. Visitors learn how Native Americans gathered sap and learn about maple trees and pioneer sugaring. In the sugar shack, the sap is boiled down into maple sugar and syrup. Kids fun at the Visitor Center. Every Sunday afternoon, a ranger meets with children to explore the Dorothy Buell Memorial Visitor Center and for an afternoon of activities. Paul H. Douglas Center Open House. During the spring and the fall, families and a park ranger can explore Miller Woods. Each month, from 1 o'clock to 4 p.m. at the Paul H. Douglas Center, a different program is featured. Threatened Lake Michigan, several times a year, visitors and a ranger at the Dorothy Buell Memorial Visitor Center can explore some of the greatest threats facing Lake Michigan. From 1 o'clock to 2 p.m., visitors learn about the spiny water flea, round goby and zebra mussel, their impacts on Lake Michigan and how to thwart invasive species. Spring Blooms Hike, a ranger is met at the Dorothy Buell Memorial Visitor Center and carpooled to the week's best trail, where the forest is explored for wildflowers and other signs of spring. Several times each spring, from 1 o'clock to 3 p.m., a group will study the park's wildflowers. Rail programs The Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore partners with the nonprofit 501 American Passenger Rail Heritage Foundation to provide onboard educational programs for train passengers on the South Shore Line. On select Saturdays, interpretive guides with the APRHF Rail Rangers ride roundtrip between Millennium Station and South Bend Airport Station to provide narration about the park and the other sites passengers see outside their window. <laughs> Field trip programs Fall fanfare Students will learn about the change of the seasons. The cooler weather and short days bring about changes as plants and animals prepare for winter. Available in October and November, the program is appropriate for 1st through 6th graders. Winter Exploration The class will explore the winter woods on a nature hike. The program begins with a slide show on animal and plant adaptations to winter. If there is sufficient snow, snowshoes will be provided for a hike in the woods. Available in January and February, the program is appropriate for 4th through 12th grade. Indians and fur traders Learn about American Indian lifestyles and the fur trade. The program goes back to the early lifestyles of the American Indians, fur traders, and voyagers. 
Available all years, the program is appropriate for 3rd through 8th grade. A grain of truth As a class, the students will explore dunes and observe how winds and powerful waves work to create and erode moving sand dunes. There is a hike in the Fordunas and down to the beach see first-hand processes of dune building, and erosion. Available during spring, summer, and fall, the program is appropriate for 4th through 8th grade. Lake Michigan Alive Students will learn about the diversity of life issues affecting Lake Michigan. Through play acting and games, they will learn about the food chain. View preserved sea lamprey and trout. Students are encouraged to help care for the Great Lakes. The program is available all year, as it is primarily indoors. There is a short trip to the lake. It is appropriate for 4th through 12th grade. Water World A true field trip, students explore a wetland. Armed with nets and pans, the will discover the diversity of pond life and learn the importance of our water resources. The program can be extended for an in-depth experience, with a three-hour hike to Lake Michigan. Subject to weather, the program is available from April to October and is appropriate for 4th through 12th grades. Habitat Hike Visit many of the habitats in the lakeshore. Students will get a chance to see many of the 1,400 species of plants in the lakeshore. Visit forest, dunes, swamp, and sand prairie, while learning about the environmental factors that affect plant survival. Available all year, except during autumn harvest and maple sugar time. Reflections on snow A cross-country skiing journey through winter habitats. Indoor activities include learning about winter track and winter survival through predation. If there is adequate snow, a ski hike will take the class out to experience the winter landscape. Availability only in January and February. The program is appropriate for 5th to 12th grade. Pinhook Bog Hike the unique world of a bog. Students will learn to identify rare, insect-eating plants and experience a habitats created by the glaciers. There is an opportunity to walk on a floating mat of sphagnum moss. Available from mid-April through mid-November, the program is appropriate for 6th through 12th grade. Topic. Professional development Dunes Educator Institutes During the academic year, the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore and the Dunes Learning Center DLC provide professional development opportunities for teacher in the K-12 setting. Workshops feature experts in various fields of study, hands-on activities and adventures within the National Lakeshore. Illinois and Indiana teachers can receive Continuing Education Units or Continuing Recertification Units for each workshops. Those teacher wishing to earn graduate credit can do so through Indiana University Northwest and Chicago State University. Workshops are held at the DLC. <laughs> Sister Park The park has a sister park relationship with Poland's Kampanowski National Park. Accessibility Indiana Dunes is working to provide access to beach areas. Access to the waters of Lake Michigan is a challenging problem. Presently, two beach access areas are considered accessible, West Beach, Portage Lakefront and Riverwalk. Accessible parking and restroom services are available throughout the park. A standard wheelchair is available for loan at the Paul H. Douglas Center. West Beach Bathhouse Paul H. Douglas Center for Environmental Education Dorothy Buell Memorial Visitor Center. Hearing assist devices are available in the theater. Topic. Facilities Dunewood Campground is located in the east section of the park, south of U.S. Route 12 at Broadway. The facility has 78 campsites, 53 drive-in some drive-through and 25 walk-in. Both the Douglas and Mather Loops have restrooms with showers and a wheelchair-accessible site. The campground is open from April 1 through October 31. There is a fee. Dorothy Buell Memorial Visitor Center is located at 1215 N State Road 49, just off State Route 49 south of the intersection with U.S. Route 20. The Visitor Center includes exhibits on the National Lakeshore and a display of artwork created in the lakeshore. 
The center is jointly operated by the National Park Service and the Porter County Visitor and Recreation Commission The visitor center is open daily, except Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Bai, Shelburg Contact Station is located in Porter, on Mineral Springs Road, just north of US-20. It is closed most of the year, except during events. The parking area provides access to the Bai Homestead and the Shelburg Farm. Dunes Learning Center or Indiana Dunes Environmental Learning Center is located on Howe Road, west of the Bai, Shelburg Contact Station, on the grounds of the former Good Fellow Club Youth Camp. Founded in 1998, Dunes Learning Center is a 501 c 3 non-profit environmental education organization working in partnership with Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore to deliver environmental education experiences. Portage Lakefront and Riverwalk is the newest facility at the National Lakeshore. It is located along the Burns Waterway, tucked next to U.S. Steel's, Midwest Plant. It can be reached off of Indiana State Road 249 by following the signs past the steel mill. The area offers a fishing pier, a riverwalk and a hike-bike trail through the restored Dunescape. There is beach access and a 3,500-square-foot pavilion. West Beach Bathhouse is located in Portage north of U.S. Route 12 on County Line Road. West Beach has ample parking, picnic shelters, and a bathhouse with showers. The bathhouse includes changing rooms, restrooms, and a lifeguarded beach. The Dune Succession Trails, West Beach Trail and the Long Lake Trail are all located in the West Beach area. Paul H. Douglas Center for Environmental Education is located in the far west end of the park, in the Miller Beach community of the city of Gary. It is just north of US-20 and US-12. The Education Center provides classrooms for programs on environmental topics. Participation is usually during a schedule program for schools and local organizations. Topic: <inaudible> Climate. The primary feature of the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore is Lake Michigan. The lake brings with it several weather-related conditions that can create threats to the enjoyment of the area. Winter: Winter months bring the risk of shelf ice. This is a condition where the winter winds push ice from Lake Michigan onto the beaches. As the cold depends, the ice can build up into long ridges creating an Arctic dunescape. Much of this ice is floating. It may be dangerous to walk on the ice as there can be air pockets into which you can sink. Rescue is extremely difficult. Summer, during the summer months, rip currents can occur in Lake Michigan. This occurs suddenly and can sweep a swimmer far out into the lake. Rip currents are most prevalent on days with a strong north wind. Rip currents are created when masses of water is pushed against the shoreline by a north wind. The mass of water becomes trapped between the beach and the first sandbar. As the wind continues, the volume of water increases until weight of incoming water and the mass of the sandbar are unable push back the growing volume of water behind the sandbar. Then, the trapped water creates a narrow channel through the sandbar. The water rushes back into the lake forming a river in the lake. Anything or anyone in the current is taken out into the lake. Topic: Gallery. Topic: Dunes National Park Association. In 2012, the Dunes National Park Association DNPA was established as a non-profit organization dedicated to supporting the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. The DNPA is endorsed by the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. The primary purpose of the DNPA is to solicit funds for the direct benefit or support of the lakeshore and related activities, advocate on behalf of the park and educate the community on the abundant resources available in the national park. See also Singing sand Geography of Indiana Geological forms north to south Modern shoreline, waves and shallow water Tolston shoreline Calumet shoreline Lake border moraine Glenwood shoreline Tinley moraine Valparaiso moraine Kankakee outwash plain 
Topic: <laughs> People associated with the Dunes. Arts: Arthur E. Anderson, artist. Frank V. Dudley, artist, November 14, 1868, 1957. Hazel and Vin, 1964. Hanel, artists and founding members of a Chicago artist community, the Association of Artists and Craftsmen of Porter County. The association still hosts the annual Chesterton Art Fair. Charlton Heston, during the filming of Julius Caesar, 1950 film. Jens Jensen, landscape architect, 1860 to 1951. Tom Mix, actor, 1880 to 1940, starred in Lost in the Soden, which was made in the Dunes. Earl H. Reed, Chicago area etcher, who used the Dunes as his inspiration. Otis Turner, director, 1862 to 1918, directed Lost in the Soden, 1910, which was made in the Dunes. May Thielgard Watts, Chicago area writer and teacher. Geologist George Cressy, wrote his doctoral dissertation on the A Study of Indiana Sand Dunes. Historic Joseph Bailly, fur trader 1774 to 1835. Diana of the Dunes, Alice Gray 1881 to 1925. Naturalist Henry Chandler Cowles, 1869 to 1939, American botanist and ecological pioneer. Austin and Rua Rand, both were ornithologists who moved into the dunes in 1947. It was the same year that Austin became curator of ornithology for the Field Museum. He wrote a weekly, country diary, in the local paper and several books and articles in the Midwestern Almanac, asterisk asterisk William, minus 1936, and Flora Richardson. After 1936, William was a professional chemist, but became an avid ornithologist and photographer. Flora was an early resident of Dune Acres. Edwin Way Teal, naturalist, 1899 to 1980. Politicians: Adam Benjamin Jr., local state senator. Paul Douglas, senator from Illinois, instrumental in the creation of the National Lakeshore. Preservation: Lee Botts, Dorothy Buell, preservationist, 1886 to 1977. Senator Paul Douglas, 1892–1976 National Park Units in Indiana National Park Service George Rogers Clark National Historical Park, in Vincennes, Indiana Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial, Dale, Indiana, northeast of Evansville <laughs> 